Turning to profit, Wolves' financial trajectory has been turbulent since their promotion in 2018. And regrettably, 2023 marks another dip, with the club recording an operating loss of a million, their worst performance of the decade. So yeah, no, it shouldn't happen. Of course it shouldn't happen. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we're returning to the West Midlands for a financial update on Wolverhampton Wanderers. If you're just joining us on the Wolves money trail, fear not, check out our first video covering the decade from 2013 to 2022. Because this time we're zooming in, focusing on just the 2023 financial year. On the pitch, Wolves retain their Premier League status with a 13th place finish, as well as making a run to the League Cup quarterfinals. On the sidelines, change was afoot with Bruno Lager's tenure cut short, paving the way for Julian Lopdegui to take the helm and steer the team through the remainder of the season. Now let's turn our focus off the pitch. What unfolded behind the scenes? In the realm of revenue, Wolves saw a 2% uptick in the 2023 financial year, boasting a total revenue of £169 million. What fueled this result? Let's break it down by revenue source. Starting with gate receipts, the Wanderers hit a milestone in 2023, raking in their highest revenue of the decade at 15.1 million. This year saw an uptick in competitive games hosted at Molyneux, spurred by three home ties in the League Cup. Additionally, average attendance for 2023 edged past the 31,000 mark, so a strong turnout from the Wolves supporters. Moving on to advertising revenues, they remain steady at 13 million, albeit a 2 million dip from pre pandemic levels. Meanwhile, TV and broadcasting revenues took a hit, sinking to 11 million, a 3 million drop attributed to four fewer televised games, with Wolves featuring in just 12 matches compared to the 16 the year before. On a brighter note, commercial revenues continued their upward trajectory, reaching a peak performance of 13.7 million for Wolves. And last but not least, Premier League distributions remained the powerhouse revenue stream, witnessing a hefty increase of over 3 million. Despite finishing three places lower than the previous season, the increase in underlying Premier League TV rights more than made up for this. So looking by league position, 2023's top line result remains consistent with other Premier League years. And on average, half a decade in the Premier League has delivered an average 167 million of revenue, over six times what Wolves made in the Championship. And yeah, obviously I'm buzzing to be in the Premier League and can't wait to get out there. So what about the bottom line? Turning to profit, Wolves' financial trajectory has been turbulent since their promotion in 2018. And regrettably, 2023 marks another dip, with the club recording an operating loss of £57 million, their worst performance of the decade. So yeah, no, it shouldn't happen. Of course it shouldn't happen. By league position, 2023 matches the financial performance of their promotion season, and that result drops average Premier League losses to £17 million. What's going on here? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. The wage bill skyrocketed by a staggering 17% to reach 142 million, largely attributed to contract terminations for Bruno Lager and his team. However, substantial investments were also made in bolstering the playing squad and expanding the workforce. Employee levels averaged 465, a 10% surge from the previous year. As a percentage of revenue, 2023 was the highest in this Premier League spell at 84%. But what impact did this have on the team's performance on the field? This year turned out to be the priciest season in terms of points, with each of Wolves 41 coming at a hefty cost of 3.5 million to the wage bill. After just staff costs, the trend of decreasing Premier League profit is evident. Moving on to operating costs, 2023 witnessed another peak at 42 million, nearly 10 million more than the previous year. Of note in the previous year, Wolves received 3 million in insurance claims from COVID disruption and fire damage, a figure notably absent in the 2023 financials. Apart from that, there isn't much information to decipher regarding the factors behind this surge. But looking at it from an EBITDA perspective, 2023 marked the first time in the top flight league where Wolves found themselves in the red. Next up, stadium facilities, expenses related to long-term assets such as Molyneux and other facilities, 
At 3 million, these remained in line with prior year, so let's delve into transfer fees. Continuing the trend of substantial transfer costs in the Premier League, 2023 incurred 39 million in expenses. During this year, there was a significant turnover in the playing squad with numerous high-value players joining the team. Nunes, Guedes, Collins, Gomez, Kladzic, Huang, Lamina. On the flip side, the departures of Gibbs White, Dendonka and Vinagra helped mitigate the financial impact of these investments. These financial trends present a challenge to Wolves and the club must vigilantly monitor this year's financial performance to ensure compliance with Premier League profit and sustainability regulations. The outcome for 2023 decreases Wolves' average margin in the Premier League to a 10% operating loss. Mind boggling. Now let's see if Cash tells a similar story. As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, is an odd one. Despite negative EBITDA, Wolves have reported 163.5 million in cash from operations. This is peculiar. Let's park this for one second. What about transfer fees? Another massive swing in the opposite direction, this time 160 million going out. So perhaps it's easier to look if we just combine these. Wolves have actually generated 4 million cash in the year. So how have Wolves brought in money despite suffering significant losses? This seems to be related to the payment terms of transfer fees and how they are evolving. At the end of May 2023, Wolves still had to pay £99 million in the next 12 months and a further 89 in later years in respect to players acquired. In total, that's £188 million owed to other clubs, an increase of over £130 million from the year before. Conversely, Wolves themselves are owed nearly £50 million in terms of players sold. So that's a net £139 million that needs to be paid out. This may be a trend with clubs seeking to extend payment terms for transfers more frequently. So has money had to flow into the club? A further £10 million was injected into the club in 2023. So on top of hefty transfer fees outstanding, Wolves' net debt was £81 million. The club as a whole has seen a swing from 54 million of net assets in 2022 plunge to net liabilities of 13 million in 2023. Since then, Loptegui departed the club ahead of the 23-24 season, with Gary O'Neill taking the reins. Despite promising performances on the pitch under the new regime, could off-field circumstances threaten to overshadow these achievements? Only time will tell. Until next time. <laughs>